All right, let's do some arithmetic with matrices. Well, the simplest thing I'm going to want to try to do is add them and subtract them. In order to add or subtract, I must have matrices that are the same size. They must. Oh, they must. That was messy. Must be the same. I'm going to use the technical word. The same order. Add or subtract corresponding elements. And that's how we're going to do this. So, for example, if A is 4, 1, notice the way I'm reading the matrix 2, by the way, 2, 6, 3, negative 4, always rows first. So I read across the row, then I go to the next row, read across the row, go to the next row, read across the row. And let's say B is 8, negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. So I have two matrices. They are the same order, so I can add them and subtract them. Let's work out what A plus B is. When you get good at this, you don't have to write this line. But I encourage you to do so to begin with until you get the hang of it. So we're going to go A plus B, we're going to add corresponding elements. 4 plus 8, 1 plus negative 2, 2 plus 1, 6 plus 0, 3 plus 1, negative 4 plus 2. See how I have got 4, oh my table's not giving up with me, 4 and 8 added for the first element. One and negative 2 added for the second element, and so on. OK, let's do the arithmetic. 4 and 8 is 12. 1 and negative 2 is negative 1. 2 and 1 is 3. 6 and 0 is 6. 3 and 1 is 4. Oh, something funny happened there with my... Thing. There we go. And my tablet went a bit funny. And negative 4 and 2 is negative 2. So that's A plus B. Notice because of the way we did that, that's actually the same result as if we had gone B plus A. That is to say, matrix addition is fancy word commutative you can swap the order and you still get the same result that happens because all i'm doing is adding corresponding elements and of course adding numbers is commutative you can do it in whichever order subtraction works the same way a minus b Again, I'll write an extra line, even though later you might not have to. It's going to be 4 minus 8, 1 minus negative 2. Notice I'm being careful with those negative signs. 2 take 1, 6 take 0, 3 take 1, negative 4 take 2. So that's going to give me negative 4. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1, 6 takes 0 is 6. 3 take 1 is 2. Negative 4 take 2 is negative 6. When you get better at it, you can skip that first line of writing each individual piece out. But if there are negative signs or fractions or anything complicated, I encourage you to write it. B minus A, on the other hand, just to show you what happens. B minus A, I will skip it this time and show you what I mean. So B minus A, we're just going to go um, 8 minus 4 first, which is 4. Then the next element, negative 2, 
take 1 is negative 3. 2 take 1 is 1. No, I did that the wrong way around. Negative 1. I wanted to go 1 take 2. 0 take 6 is negative 6. Uh, 1 take 3 is negative 2. And 2 take negative 4 is 2 plus 4, which is 6. Notice what happened. B minus A is the negative of A minus B. Actually, we've just done the next thing I'm going to show you already there, scalar multiplication. When I say negative of A minus B, I mean I'm going to negate every individual element of that matrix. I'm multiplying the matrix A minus B by negative 1. And I do that by multiplying every element inside by negative 1. So this is the same result as you will get with normal scalar arithmetic. Just to clarify that, let's talk about scalar multiplication. Oops, plication. What do I mean by that? If I go KM, where K is a real number, not a matrix. Notice it's a small letter, it's a lowercase letter, meaning it's a scalar. That's what the word scalar here means. It means not a matrix. So all I do is I multiply every element by that number. So for example, 3a here, I'm going to get 3 times 4, which is 12, 3 times 1, which is 3, 3 times 2, which is 6, 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And that's scalar multiplication.